There are certain things people expect to see on the outside of their house, you know, a mailbox, a backlight, the electric meter. But what they love to see is an outside garden faucet. Now there's a lot of names for it, the garden faucet, silcock, spigot, and sooner or later they can wear out. So I thought we'd take a minute to talk about the care and feeding of an outside silcock or spigot. Here it is in cutaway right here. And it has two actions inside. One is right here. There's full city water pressure right here and there's a washer. And as you turn the handle, look what happens. That washer rises and water will come out through the spigot right here, through the hose, to the hose. So now when you close it, you turn it down, you compress that washer down against the seat. And over time, that washer can wear out. Now they make kits with every kind of size washer you'd need here. There's a variety of different kits you might get. And you really need to just find the correct washer. The hardest part is to get this screw out. It's been sitting in water its entire life. So you want to take, a, in this case, a Phillips screwdriver head and then make your connection to it and then back it out. If you snap this off, you're going to have to retap it or get a whole new unit. Okay? But then once you take it off, put the new one in, put it back together again. Now, before you put it back in, I want to call out this. They make a simple little thing called waterproof grease. You see it in the plumbing aisle. And you can see right here, this is what you would do onto this thread and just put a little bit of grease because this is a metal on metal connection. And so now it's going to give you a little more extended life. So that's one place it would leak and that's a pretty straightforward repair if the washer comes up. But another place you can see a leak is right from the very top and that's called the bonnet. When you turn the handle and water comes shooting out through here because that stem is going up and down. So if you look underneath this bonnet nut, there's a packing and that's called a bonnet packing. And what happens is you compress it down. So sometimes all you need to do is take a pair of pliers and snug up that bonnet packing so that it compresses tighter against the stem. But sometimes that bonnet packing is just worn out and gone. So now in some of these master kits, they'll have bonnet packings and you hope that it's the right size. They also make bonnet packing uh, in different uh, gauges that you can wrap around underneath that bonnet nut. But for my money, I would actually use Teflon tape. And you can take that Teflon tape and really build your own gasket, you know, your own bonnet packing by just twisting it up, putting it on top, wrapping it around. Now you compress it and you compress that Teflon into a new bonnet packing. So with those two repairs, you could get, extend the life of this for a fairly long time. Now this is what you see most often on most houses in America. And it, it's cheap, it's sort of the standard, but every year if you live in a cold climate you have to think about how to make sure you turn off the inside faucet and drain this out because look, the water sitting right here in harm's way where it could freeze. They also make a very interesting device called a frost-proof silcock. Now you can see the difference. They both have handles that actuate a washer, but in this case the washer is sitting outside the building right here where it can freeze. Look at this one. Here's the house. Look where the washer is. Way inside over here. So now that's in a place that never gets cold so it can't freeze. When you turn the handle you can still see the threads that are going to drive that washer up and down but it's never going to freeze and hence the name Frostproof Silcock. So the thing that brought me to this house was the complaint that water was spraying all over the place. So they turned the water off inside. So here's that bonnet. All right. All right. So the whole unit sort of fell apart. So the important part is stuck way inside there. We're going to have to actually replace this whole unit. We're going to have to go deeper. So down here in the basement, the outdoor faucet is right there. And if you chase this line back, you can see that the shutoff valve is off right here. So now I'm good to go. And the simplest place for me to work is actually right here. So I could cut it simply. I'm just going to pull it out from the outside. Okay. There we go. 
So look at this. Look how short this was. This thing was sitting probably in the sill, so it was pretty close to the outside. That actually could have frozen. Now compare that to the new piece right here. Look at this. The washer is way back in here, and that's a lot safer. Now we need to make sure that the new work is the same length as the old. So I could tie on here with a threaded adapter, put a little bit of Teflon tape on here, thread it on, but I'm worried about the thickness of this shoulder. This piece barely came through the hole in that big thick sill. So what I'm going to do is actually, because I can, you can solder right into the inside right here, just like this one is down here, and that'll keep it a lot thinner. And if we solder that on here, stick it back in, the last thing we'll have to do is to make this coupling connection in a place where I can get at it. There's a rubber washer that's sitting right next to where we're going to apply all that heat. So we need to remove the shank. That's a rubber washer and a gasket. That would not like to get too hot. Okay, time to solder. All right, so water's back on. Let's give it a little test. Look at that, just like it's supposed to work. So with what, about an hour's worth of work and probably 50 bucks in material, these homeowners now have a faucet they can use in any weather. And hopefully this helped you a little bit to help you decide how to service your existing valve or to pick the right one if going new. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.